Hey everybody, so I am, I have rigged up my phone as best as I can to try to do this live thing because I need my computer to, um, there we go, I think that works. If it falls down, I'm sorry, first off, but I need my computer to be able to see because I have a few things here for you guys tonight. So thank you everybody for joining. First off, I want to say, I don't know who sent this to me, but I got this in the mail today, and whoever sent it to me, thank you. I love it. I'm going to wear it a ton. I think it's fantastic, and it was such a, a good, uh, happy time for me when I got home and I saw that. I was so excited to see it. So, I don't know who did it, and I have no note. I have nothing other than a note that said thank you, um, but no name or anything, but I do. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you. So, that's the reason I wore it tonight, because I want to show you whoever it was that sent it to me that I love it. So thank you. So tonight, so I know I sent you guys, I just told everybody to kind of send in some questions and some emails um, because we needed, you know, want to know what everybody wants, you know, the questions that are out there, the concerns that are out there, because we know that you're hit with so much different information and, um, you know, you're getting everything from all different places. So thank you for all those we got a lot of emails a lot of emails a lot of messages a lot of questions and so thank you for that so a lot of those are definitely going to be again i am whitney Pugh. i'm the nurse practitioner and owner of agenda care house calls and um one thing that i oh you're tilting again tilting a little bit one thing i want to go over i've had a lot of people ask and say you know are you guys um still open is agenda care still doing everything um i think i got you now um are they still you know full service so we are. So Agenda Care Office Calls is still doing all the urgent care. We're still doing wound care, sur sutures, um, even doing the needleless suturing so that's um, pain free, especially for the little kiddos. Um, we're doing um, also primary care now. So we've added that in there as well. We're doing lab draws and we're doing telehealth. So we've kind of added a whole lot of um, different things in there, but we're still full service. We're still there for um for anything that you need hey miss tammy all right so the biggest question that i have had um and the biggest uh, lots of people have forwarded me the message or the video lots of people have called me about it lots of people have messaged me about it is this video that had came up from these two doctors that work urgent care in bakersfield california um, and they came out and their big points that they had to say was that the social distancing is overkill um, and that we need to let everybody back out and then once we all get back out that we'll develop this herd immunity to where we'll all have immunity to it and then be able to kind of move on a little quicker. They said that in the past all these pandemics that we've never actually quarantined the healthy that we've always just quarantined the sick and so they had a lot of points out there and so there were some valid points on there I, I will give you that there were some valid points but a lot of people I have noticed have taken this and said you know we're, we're tired of being quarantined now right because we're, we've been at this for now what five fish give or take weeks and so we're kind of at that breaking point where we're like all right we're done with this we don't want to do this anymore and then we hear validity from two doctors you know who are urgent care doctors and they get out there and they say all of our colleagues are saying this is what we should do and the Kern County Public Health they also agree with us so um first off yeah no um but anyhow so I didn't want to just give you my opinion with you guys because this is what a lot of people have all these questions for me about and and they're like well what is is it is it true you know can can we kind of start coming out and not worrying about it? moving on with this i talk fast because i'm from the south and i can't help it so if i get to talking too fast you need to just tell me please slow down a little bit but again those who have joined this hat whoever gave me this hat i love it love it love it love it thank you so much for it i have no clue who sent it to me but i love it thank you so you'll probably see me in it every day from um for a while now <laughs> all right so first thing i wanted to kind of read you guys real quick is it actually was a thing that came out from nbc news and a guy by the name of clark wrote it and last name clark and it's san francisco had the 1918 flu control and this these two docs were actually talking about 
And November, so here it reads, it was November 21st, 1918, San Francisco residents were gathered in the street because they were celebrating the recent end of World War I, and they were also celebrating um, being able to take off their face coverings in public to stop the spread of the so-called Spanish flu. So despite warnings from the health department to maintain face coverings, as the celebration continued, people flocked down there, restaurants opened, other public spaces open, city officials would soon learn that their problems were far from over. Amid, so now, amid the coronavirus pandemic, we have a lot of people who are urging to reopen the state. As we know that Georgia reopened this past Friday, and lots of others are, often, are moving quickly, probably quicker than they should, to resume normal businesses. Um, and even as new cases emerge, right, for us. Mm -hmm. So how officials acted during the 1918 flu pandemic, specifically in cities such as San Francisco, offers a cautionary tale about the dangers of doing so too soon for us. So Alex Navarro, he's an assistant director of the Center of the History of Medicine at the University of Michigan. He said that he also does research and is done in conjugation with the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. He said that when they removed those restrictions too soon, then many cities saw a resurgence in cases. The center's research found that cities that used early sustained and layered practices, such as social distancing, closing public events, and stay-at-home orders, fared better than those who did not. Two, um, just two months earlier in September, the first case of the so-called Spanish flu was identified in San Francisco and city health officials sprung into action. Dr. William Hassler, the city health officer, ordered the local man who apparently brought the disease to the city after a trip to Chicago into quarantine. So then um, to stop the disease from finding another human host, the center um, started jumping on it, but it was too late at that time. By mid-October, the cases had jumped from 169 to 2,000. This is the same story we're having here, right? This is the same thing we see. In just one week, though. All right, later that month, Mayor Roth put in place social distancing practices and met with Hassler, other health officials, local businesses owners, as well as officials from the federal government to discuss a plan to close the city. Some officials demurred at the idea, worried about damage to the city's economy and the risk of causing public panic. Again, that's us, right? Eventually, on October 18th, the city voted to shut it down, all places of public uh, amusement. City officials also strongly advocated for face coverings, and they actually, eventually, after having a little bit of issue, they actually made it a law where you had to have a face covering or you would get arrested or a $5 fine. So um, people started wearing them. Lots went to jail, but people started wearing them. By the end of October, there were 20,000 cases and more than 1,000 deaths. However, as the days went on, the city saw a dip in newly reported cases, which promptly prompted officials to begin to reopen the city and resend the masks. By the end of November, officials believed the city had stabilized, but three weeks after the celebration of removing their masks, the city saw a dramatic resurgence. Officials at first rejected the idea of reopening the city and suggested residents could voluntarily wear face masks, but shortly after the new, new year in 1919, the city was hit with 600 new cases in one day, which then made them go back to mandatory masks. So protests against it, of course, build up. Navarro said that many cities often became complacent once they saw a dip in the cases, again, where we are. And when a resurgent happens, residents often question the public health guidance. Again, those doctors. Um, they were flattening that curve. They just weren't realizing it. Again, where we are, guys. So we are starting to see a difference in that curve. The thing is, is we knew when we went into that social distancing and, and doing this, we knew it was going to take weeks before it started coming down because you got to remember those who have it, you know, they should have been so, um, Dr. Falke, the nation's top infectious disease expert, put it in March, if it looks like you're overreacting like we're doing with the social distancing, then we're probably doing the right thing. Back during the Spanish flu, San Francisco's failure to take swift action and the decision to ease restrictions after only a few weeks had huge ramifications. With 45,000 cases and more than 3,000 deaths, the city was reported to have been one of, if not the hardest hit big city. Roughly a century later, the San Francisco Bay Area imposed the nation's first stay-at-home order and other restrictions when coronavirus cases were rapidly growing, placing a spotlight on its pandemic response again. This aggressive actions are credited with saving lives and avoiding the scale of tragedy found in New York City. Mayor London Breed said that she took heed of history and implemented an order last week requiring anyone setting foot on the streets of San Francisco out of their homes to wear a face covering. 
This article is actually April the 17th, so this was a week ago, um, but they are required to wear face coverings at essential businesses and public facilities transit while performing essential work, but they have been on top of it. Um, another thing that just to kind of mention, um, it looks like they went, um, after this was done, they went and talked with the Kern County Public Health and they did not concur with what was being said. So that's just kind of another thing to mention. Um, one of the other things that a lot of people are having questions on is about the immunity, right? So if we have um, antibodies, then are we immune? And then um, can we go back out? And so a big thing is, is here's another article. Again, I don't want it to be my opinion. I want you guys to actually hear what um, my dog's over there eating something. Of course he is. Uh, he likes to chew a lot, guys. So anyhow. Um, so here is actually from the World Health Organization. Coronavirus immunity passports could increase virus spread. So what it says here is there is ev currently no evidence that people who have recovered from COVID-19 and have antibodies are protected from a second infection. Most studies carried out so far showed that people who had recovered from the infection had antibodies in their blood, but some of these people had very low levels of antibodies. And they've also said that some only lasted about a month. So as of Friday, which was this past Friday, no study had evaluated whether the presence of antibodies to the virus conferred immunity to the subsequent infections by the virus in humans. At this point in the pandemic, there is not enough evidence about the effectiveness of antibody-mediated immunity to guarantee the accuracy of an immunity passport, or basically you can go out and do what you want to because you have that immunity. Um, the organization also said that lab tests to detect further val um, validation to determine their accuracy and also needed to distinguish between previous infection of the SARS virus versus the other six coronaviruses that are there. So they say again, there isn't currently any evidence to suggest having had the virus once protects you, uh, once protects you from getting it again. So the idea of um, the herd immunity, having the herd immunity, allowing people, um, it, we don't know, right? So we don't know that. We haven't had enough research. There hasn't been enough tests and stuff done out there to know that if we get these immunity that, we, that it will help. We do know that it mutates. It mutates like crazy. And um, some of the mutations are very deadly and some of the mutations aren't too bad. Um, you get, some countries have got the worst ones where their death numbers are higher and then some have gotten the, the not, you know, as bad of ones. So, these are things we don't know. So to tell people that it's okay to go back out and they'll develop this herd immunity, we don't have that research. We don't have that knowledge. And then what we also don't know is we don't know the after effects of having COVID, right? So how do you, I mean, there's a lot of scary things out there and, and I'll probably not say them because I know a lot of people have a lot of anxiety over this, but you know, um, the your life the length of your life can be cut down um, you can have lung issues for the rest of your life um, there's lots of things out there that are a lot of you know faults but we don't have a lot of time that we've actually done to research this so that we truly know those answers and I for one am not willing to go out there and take my kids out there and my family out there and say oh we're just gonna try it and we're gonna see I'm not one that wants to do that all right so um, Let's see where I am. So one thing I want to tell you guys why we're waiting for me to figure out my go to my next one is I have got a surprise for you guys because I know these days in the last past like um, five weeks have been hard and I know a lot of people are, are struggling and um, having issues. And so one thing that I wanted to do is I'm actually going to do a giveaway for you guys. So the ones who are watching, yay, you get a giveaway. So. I'm going to put a link in the comments after this is finished, after I hit finish, I'm gonna put a link in the comments and all you do is you go to that link and put in your email address. And then what I'm going to do on Friday is I'm going to draw one of those names that has put that in. And that person will be getting a $50 Amazon gift card, okay? Now the shipping you may take you, you know, four months to get it, but hey, you're still gonna get a gift card, right? Um, so uh, again, I'll put the link in there as soon as we get done. All you have to do is click on it, email address, and all you'll get with the email address is we'll give you updates and just things like that, okay? All right, so that's a good thing. That's an exciting thing. So, all right, let's move on. <clears throat> One thing that the doctors also said was is that with the pandemic, in the past, we've always um, 
we've only quarantined the sick. We haven't quarantined the healthy. All right, so here's a little bit about that too. So um, there was um, a Miss Lynn, a managing director of the Pharaoh's Global Health Advisor and a lecturer at the Jackson Institute for Global Affairs at Yale University. You know, and I, and I don't know about you guys, but when I see Yale University, I think smart, right? But anyhow, Mr. Heck is a professor of the clinical epidemiology at Yale University and the president of the Pharaoh's Global Health Advisor. And so they wrote this article. This article is most Americans who carry the coronavirus don't know it. Okay. Okay. All right. So it says almost the only people who are being tested for coronavirus are those who have symptoms of COVID-19. And that's the truth, right? Because we're not, in the beginning, we didn't even had enough tests. And even now we still struggle with it, but we didn't have enough tests to actually test everyone. So we were only testing those who were truly sick. Um, so what they say is what's truly needed is widespread testing of people with known symptoms and uh, it, just widespread testing. A small set of blood tests for antibodies indicated that as many as 2.7 million New Yorkers have been infected without realizing it. So they've come up with several different numbers, right? And they're saying it's kind of around a 25%, but we don't know until we do mass testing of people who walk around asymptomatic and have no idea. So this is the reason that we can't just pit the sick people and quarantine the sick people because we have a large number of people who have no idea that they're even sick actually running around out there so that's not really an answer that we can do you know um, unless we had mass testing if we have mass testing then we could test and know you know yeah you have it you need to quarantine yourself even though you're not feeling bad so where was I at um so uh, governor um, the New York governor had said on Thursday, so this is what he had said, the 2.7 million New Yorkers have been infected without knowing it. He said that's in line with other findings. A recent study showed that up to one-third of residents in Chelsea hotspot in Massachusetts may have been infected and only half of them could recall even having a single symptom over the past four weeks. Um, there were, and there's several other studies that go with that. And if anybody wants these articles, just let me know. I can always send you this stuff. Um, so it says we need to aggressively search for asymptomatic carriers who have frequent contact with the public and among vulnerable populations. Those who are high risk asymptomatic groups um, who must be urgently targeted and include health workers, especially those in long term care facilities, the homeless and those working in shelters, grocery store employees, delivery drivers, taxi drivers, emergency workers, employees in high density workplaces like delivery warehouses and meat processing plants. Um, it's saying that these people need to be tested, okay? Anyone who has close contact with a known COVID-19 patient as well needs to be tested. These high-risk groups need to be tested as often as every five days, which is interesting to me. Given what we know about the time it takes to develop symptoms after becoming infected and those found to be infected should self-isolate immediately while their um, contacts should be quarantined for four days. So what they're saying is basically we don't have enough tests, but that's truly what we need to be doing. So that would allow us to come out, and that's what they're working on, right? So um, one thing I wanted to say, um, kind of drop back a little bit to the meat processing plants, that is what's going to be hit hard, and we kind of tend to have these delays, right? So we get hit hard with, um, like, the plants. It's not that the plants are closing, but it's when those people get sick, they have to shut down the plants, right? So they are looking at meat shortages. So make sure that you're filling your freezer up, that you're finding your local um, farmers around that you can get meat from, right? Make sure that you're doing a garden. I, for one, am not a garden girl, I'm not going to lie. My husband has done a garden for years and he is great at it. I don't like it. However, this year I am sucking it up and I'm going to do a garden. But, you know, things like that, find your local resources because that's really what's going to help you, right? Um, so, and also too, it helps your local community. So that's what you want to do. All right. Or was I? I? I jump around a little bit, I'm telling you. All right, so talking about the high risk. So it says right now 200,000 people a day are being tested for the virus across the country. We need this to grow to around a million tests a day. So they're just kind of giving you numbers, right? Just, just to know kind of what we're looking at. Um, and testing will be sufficient when fewer than 5% of the tests come up positive, all right? So it's talking about these different things. So um, 
I know that um, our governor is talking about when they reopen things, you know, we're not going to really start reopening things and go in those phases until we see a two-week drop in the numbers. And, guys, that's important. It, you know, we've all sat at home now for five weeks, right? Don't just run out and mess this up. It stinks for everybody. It stinks for everybody. There's no one person that's joyful and happy with this, right? But we have now given five weeks to it. Don't mess it up by just saying, I'm done with this and I just want to run on out and do what I want to because those doctors said we could. Well, you know, not really. I haven't noticed anybody else in the world who's agreed with those doctors who does any type of medicine or uh, medical practice. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there are, but, you know. Um, so don't, it's just like running half a race, all right? Like you run half a race and then you're like, I'm done. I'm not going to do that anymore. Well, then tomorrow we got to restart the whole race again. And that's what will happen. If we run out too early, that's what will happen. They stall it in the Spanish flu. Let's not repeat history. That's what we need to do is learn from history, right? So um, next big question that I had was on vaccines, right? So vaccines. Best guess 12, best time is going to be 12 months before we even get a vaccine, right? Because it takes anywhere between 12 and 18 months, or I guess more like 14 and 18 months before any vaccine will come out. Here's a couple problems with that. So hopefully a vaccine comes out and that, that will be great. I, I'm, I'm not one that really thinks that we're going to get a vaccine, but of course I'm not all right all the time either. Um, the vaccine, this virus has mutated so much, it's going to be hard. It would have to be a yearly thing, right? So it could be like the flu. But it's, it's mutated so much, it's very hard to find that vaccine. And um, it is, um, it's just interesting to me, right? You've seen a lot of the different vaccine studies, and you know, the first one that got it, you know, didn't fare so well. So, but you know, we're still a year away from that. So we have to come up with other things. Um, people were asking a lot about vacations for the summer. So this is what I have to say. Use your best judgment and think about it this way. If you go to a home, if you booked a home and you're going to a home at the beach, wherever, the, the um, mountains, Tennessee, any of those, anywhere, call your person that, you're, that you booked it from, especially like if you Airbnb or it's somebody's place, and ask them, how do you disinfect the home? That'd be number one. I would want to know if they were doing anything extra or not. Number two, like if they have a pool and if it's just your pool, right, or it's just the pool for the house, I have no idea how long COVID can live in a pool or with chlorine or salt water. I, I don't know those answers. Um, I don't know that they've studied it. That's possible. Um, I do know that when they looked at it on that cruise ship, they actually found that it could stay on the actual surfaces for three weeks, right? So if they miss cleaning it and they miss a spot and you get in there, or if the person who's cleaning it and they don't wear masks or they don't wear anything and they feel fine and then to, they're a symptomatic carrier or they have it, you know, in the next couple of days, you know, I, I, you're going to have to use your own judgment on this, guys, um, as to what you do. And yeah, you can go and then you can order food in and stuff. But remember, every exposure you have, everything you bring into your home, as a possibility of an exposure, right? So like if you go to Lowe's, go to Home Depot, bring something in your home, it's an exposure. You need to clean it, right? So you got to be um, careful with it. Um, as far as mask wearing, I, I would def I wear a mask everywhere I go. When I step outside of my property, I always have my mask on unless I'm riding in my car. But when I get out, when I see all my patients, I look like an alien every time I see my patient. But I'm going to have my new hat on. Again, whoever gave me this, I love it. Thank you, thank you. Would love to know who it came from so I could really tell you thank you. But I, I get it. Um, so, but in the grocery stores and the stores, I always have my mask on. And it just, it, I, when I see people without a mask on, I just want to just cry and hand them one. Because you have no idea who has walked in front of you or, or what you picked up and put near your mouth. Um, the next thing is the glove thing, guys. L let's just use common sense with gloves. If you put gloves on and you walk out and you touch everything, and then you touch yourself, and then you scratch your head, and then you grab your mask or what, that lack thereof, and then you touch stuff, you know what? You're not really doing anything. You're just spreading it, and then you're getting it as well. So be smart when, you, when you're using your gloves and stuff like that. So where am I? I think that kind of wraps it up. Let me look and see uh, what I got to see if I've got any questions. Whoa, you guys, that's awesome. You guys are all over the place. Thank you. Yeah, I know the hat is so cute. Again, I have no idea who sent it to me and I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I love the headgear. <laughs> Y'all are silly. So I hope I have answered everybody's question. That was the biggest question that I got. Um, 
as far as economy, I mean, let's just face it, our economy is 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 it's not going to do well from this. I mean, even when we do reopen back up, you have to look at all the things. I mean, you know, movie theaters take a big hit. Um, hit. Um, all the places that are social gatherings, they're going to take big hits because you still have a lot of people that don't want to go out and don't want to um, actually, um, my dog wants to say hi, and actually, you know, be around social gatherings and stuff. Yes, he's a 100-pound lab. It's a mutt right here, but he is just something else. He thinks he's a lap dog. But anyhow, um, so, you know, our economy is going to take a big hit. I know a lot of people had asked about that. So, you know, this is the time that if you were ever thinking about doing anything online or anything different, maybe it's something you want to kind of start while you're sitting at home, you know. All right. Let's see. What other questions do I have? Oh, that. I know. All right. Yes. So, remember, I have got the um, Amazon um, gift card. So, I'm going to put the link... Um, I'm going to put the link in the bottom of this comment there on, of course, on the Jenna Cares um, uh, Facebook page. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put the link there. So you just click on it, put your email in there, and then you'll be entered to win. And then I will announce the winner on Friday. Fun. Again, $50 gift card. Again, I cannot control the shipping. So, um I, uh, sorry for how long that may take, right? Jane, Wonder Woman now has her shield. You better believe it. All right, what about sweat? What are you talking about with sweat? Can it contract that way? Is that what you're talking about, Jen? So, I'm going to guess that's probably what you were talking about. So, um, so here's the thing. They know that there's, there was one, uh, a lady actually had been tested. They had tested her nose. They had tested her mouth. And it, she had negative COVID swabs. She kept having this conjunctivitis in her eyes. They swabbed her eyes. It came back positive. So they've also um, had it positive in the GI tract. So it, it, who knows? Very likely it could come from sweat as well, right? Um, they have found that this um, virus has really no rules, has no regulations. It don't care what, um, it don't care how big you are. It don't care if you're a man or a woman. It doesn't care what color you are. It doesn't care about anything, this virus. And it also is able to kind of hide there silently. So can it be in your sweat? Absolutely it can. At this point, um, you, you can imagine it's everywhere, right? So there's just so much we don't know. Um, the summer and the heat. So, oh, interesting. Yes, Tammy, thank you for asking that. That's a fantastic question. So, in the beginning, yes, we thought that coronavirus was actually could be destroyed by heat, right? It wouldn't last very long. It wouldn't do all that good. Then, coronavirus or COVID-19 got in Brazil. And then, it went crazy in Brazil. And we know Brazil's warm and it's hot. So they have found since then that no, nope, that's not really the case, that it actually can grow anywhere. Um, but we feel, I, 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 my heart goes out to all our Australian uh, friends there because they're actually getting ready to go into flu season. So, oh, that's just, that's, I, I feel really bad for them. So, all right, guys. Oh, yeah, yes. Okay, good. Yeah. So, if anybody has any questions, please send them over. Otherwise, I'll put the link in the bottom. Um, of this and um, you guys just click on it put your email address there you'll be entered to win $50 gift card which gifts right now again this gifts right now are um, happy ways just to kind of help what if the only symptom is persistent dry cough for about two months physician thinks it's just allergies <laughs> well Heather you know what then you say I want to be tested and if they won't do it then you call me I'll test you um, yeah yeah you know I would, you know, and it, it could be allergies, but the problem is, is do we know, right? Because, I mean, with COVID, we've got any symptom from A to Z. So, you just have to kind of push, and then if they won't do it, you got to find your resource, okay? But I, I, will, I will test anybody. It doesn't matter. But, again, whoever sent me this hat, thank you, thank you, thank you. I would love to know who sent it to me, but... Um, um, Let's see how sick of the coffin temperature in February. Yeah, so we know that our first cases actually were in January. And that is, thank you, to, um, Debbie, because a lot of people are asking, you know, hey, was, um, was that what I had in November? Is that what I had on the couch, Jerry? Is that what I had? Um, don't tell Joey. <laughs> is that what I had back in November or December? Um, you know, the thing is, is we don't know, right? So, so we don't know. Um, depending on the antibody testing, you know, if that is able to 
the, if the COVID-19 stays in our body for longer and we're able to do the antibody testing and figure that out, then we'll, we'll know. But as of right now and at this point, there is, we don't have that, we don't know that um, and whether it was there or not. So, okay, great questions, guys. Really, really good questions. So, and I know it's hard. I know it's hard when you guys get all kinds of different information from all different people, but that was the reason that I wanted to actually read you guys those articles and let you listen to those articles because, you know, it's not just my opinion or someone else's opinion. It's, it's actually, these are people who do this. This is what they do all the time, every day, all day. And, um, sometimes the validity that we think we get through others of answers that we want to hear kind of goes together and makes it stronger. But we have to we have to know. Make sure you're educated about it, right? Oh, thank you, Suzanne. I appreciate that. That is awesome. Thank you. Um, they have a new testing site in Roanoke for with referral. FYI, yeah, Melissa. Yeah, so they have to have a um, an order, don't they? Isn't that right? They have to have an order, a doctor's order. I think, yeah, I think that's what you're saying. Um, yeah, and you have to get a doctor's order to do it. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So they have several places actually over in Roanoke. Now they have a Roanoke one and then a Salem um, one that they're doing it as well. But oftentimes um, in the actual offices when they have that, they're making you um, have a lot of the symptoms, right? And sometimes you don't. And none of my COVID um, positive patients have had high fevers. It's always been 99 to 100, you know, very low grade and and the ones that I have tested, uh, they don't have fevers at the time that I test them. So, oh yeah, thanks, Missy, you're welcome, yeah. yeah. Even though it's fast, right, I speak really fast. I'm from, of course, Rural Retreat, right? And um, my dad always laughed at me about how I would say, I go, Rural Retreat, and it all runs together. <sighs> but yeah, yeah, Melissa, yeah, yeah, exactly, so. All right, guys. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in. This has been a great, great video. I hope you guys thought that it was. Any other questions you have, let me know. Um, you know, even if you, if you have different thoughts, absolutely, you know, let me know. Um, and then again, I'm going to put that link in there. Try to win your $50 gift card at the time now. We have to be nice to people. We have to be kind to people and realize that every single person that's going is struggling with something different, right? Being at home, losing jobs, um, homeschooling, oh, homeschooling, and um, uh, having to also work from home. You know, everybody's situation is different. And just realize that and just be kind. Now's the time to be kind. Now's the time to pray if you're a prayer. But pray um just um be nice to each other okay but thank you guys so so much for joining i appreciate it and i hope you guys have a wonderful night and again if anybody wants to tell me who sent me this hat i would love it because i do love it all right bye guys